Hey there everyone, welcome to Disney Springs. We are here celebrating in the magic. Today we got something special planned. I need some new shoes. And there's a store called Fit to Run that I kind of want to check out. They fit you for shoes, something very special. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. We're gonna check that out today. Starbucks first though, Starbucks first. Now the time is 10.52 in the morning on a Sunday. So very, you know, you'd expect, you know, December, you know, Sunday, crowded. The fact that it's already this crowded this early to me is absolutely shocking. I, I can't even get over it. The parking lot, orange parking was, there was a line for it. There was a line for lime parking. Goes to show a lot of guests ready to experience the magic this holiday season. I think it's a great thing. It just means that there are going to be more opportunities for Disney to grow in the future. That's how I see it. I've really thought about this in terms of, you know, what it means for Disney. It's a good thing that people are back. It really is. The more people, yes, it's more crowded, but more opportunities for them to continue to expand. Starbucks coffees, bright and early in the morning. Goes to show, very popular. A lot of people going in first thing. Today from Starbucks, we're trying something new. It's the passion fruit black tea lemonade here. It has lemonade inside, but it's the uh, very special passion fruit and black tea. Let's give it a try and I'll let you know what I think. Not bad, not super sweet though. I'm doing that intentionally, just trying to change my sweetness level. That's the problem, I, I'm drinking too sweet of things. So this is, this is not bad, it's a good mix. Again, passion fruit and black tea lemonade. So good, not super sweet, but a good refresher to start the day. You know, I was thinking about the NBA experience just a bit and this building right here at Disney Springs. You can see City Works here and the former NBA experience, which has been closed and will not re be reopening. You can see there's a screen up there, but the buildings are attached. See that? It's basically one large building. It's not, it doesn't feel or look like two buildings. It looks like one. Now, could Disney Imagineering figure out a way to make it into two? Yeah, probably. But my guess is that eventually when all this gets changed one day, it's going to remain like this. You have this like little, I don't know, kind of meets here, right? It just feels like one building. So eventually whatever replaces the NBA experience here will have to be connected to CityWorks in some way. My thought is another virtual reality experience of some way, some form, I don't know what kind, but something else like Disney Quest, I don't know, like the void, something in between. The Disney Quest itself is not coming back. There's no question about that. But something for us to do indoors, like an indoor theme park. The Disney Quest idea worked so well for so long. I think just running away from that idea wouldn't make sense. Here in the M&M store, you can see they've got the holiday cheer started here. Love it, M&M's at Disney Springs. You can see I'm the funny one with the M in the middle. I'm the sweet one, I'm the sassy one. That's cute for the whole family and presents right up front. The holiday section is here in the M&M store and I love it, a lot of green, a lot of red. You can see they've got this really new dispenser right here. I just saw it, I'm like, I love it. Look at this, okay, so you try me, so I don't understand how you, okay, we'll figure this out together. I figured out you have to crank it a little bit and then just like that, spins around and M&Ms would come out. Got it. Check out more of the season's greetings right here. They've got some of those very special holiday themes going all the way around. Doesn't look like they've changed the M&Ms though, just kind of the sign. Goes all the way around, same price, and same delicious M&Ms, but with the holiday overlay. Salt and straw, deliciously curious, or curiously delicious, ice cream opening 2022. I'm very excited about it, I am, but it's actually located next to the cigar store, which to me is a little concerning because you can smell the cigar smoke from here. So I'm hoping that it, it, you can't smell it, the ice cream store, but we'll find out together. I love a good ice cream shop. You know, that's one of those uh, things I did want to discuss. Uh, the cigar store here at Disney Springs is actually pretty intense. It's pretty intense. You can smell it from far away. I know that there are guests who really do enjoy it. I don't smoke, but I know there are guests who enjoy it. And my thought is that there's got to be a way for them to kind of, I guess, like mute the smell a little bit, make it a little bit better so you don't smell it that much as you walk by, especially if you don't smoke. I'm trying to think of a better way that they could, I don't know, fix that, whether they, maybe they just close the door because they leave the door open so that those who pass by you know, can see it and can smell it. But I feel like closing the door to the cigar store would help a lot. I'm not saying they have to move. I think it would be helpful if they moved to, the, to one side or the other Disney Springs. So we don't have to walk right by it as we go to AMC in that side. I mean, it makes me not want to go to that side because it's a very strong smell. May, this may just be me and that's okay, but 
I don't know, I feel like it's just too strong of a smell as you're walking by the cigar shop. We'll see, ice cream store gonna open soon. Maybe the ice cream smell will overpower the cigar smell. Fingers crossed. 12 o'clock right now, you can see the crowds here at Disney Springs have increased tremendously. It's hard to imagine how much, but it's a lot. It's, uh, it's a lot, a lot. In terms of uh, rating the crowd level, I give this and the overall time of year right now, early December, about an, a seven or eight out of 10. It is a very intense crowd day here at Disney Springs. And the crowds in the parks have been equally intense in the last few days. So it's only gonna get more intense as we get closer and closer to that special night where St. Nick takes that flight. Here it is inside this little overhang area here that's fit to run. We're gonna go look for some new shoes today. Perfect for any run Disney races coming up in the future. They're gonna, I think they're gonna fit us in some very special way. Let's check out how they do it right now. Inside Fit to Run now, and we're gonna try and speak to a representative who can fit us for shoes. I'm guessing at this machine right here. Let's check it out. So I'm looking at these shoes right here. You can see they've got the, uh, I think these are called Onks here. I'm not 100% sure what they're called. I'm still trying to figure out all the different uh, shoe styles. I know the Hoka shoes, and I know that those can be super nice. They got Nike and New Balance. A lot of different shoes here, a lot of different items to choose from. But we're here for a fitting to make sure we get the, uh, the right kind of shoe for us. Now there is a big difference between the running shoes and just walking around shoes. So here are those Hoka's again, and I'm not sure if it's a huge difference in terms of like, are these running or are these just like walking around the parks? Or is there one that could work for both? I don't know. That's what we're gonna find out today. That's why we are here. Fits run to try and figure all this out together. There's one called Brooks. Yeah, Brooks shoes right here. These, these feel pretty light. Most of these shoes, I think, are pretty average pricing. We're seeing between $120 and $200 or so for, uh, for these shoes, which to me feels average. I don't know. Here are the Asics here. And you know, I, I wear Asics all the times, but I'm not sure if Asics are right for me anymore. I don't know why. It feels like I need something better for, for running, but maybe these are the best running shoes. I'm going to leave it to our rep. They are going to be fitting us when they can. They're very busy here. As, uh, as we can imagine, because there are a lot of uh, friends here, as we saw with the crowds earlier, who are uh, ready for some holiday shoe shopping. Really interesting. Oh, so it's, all right. Very cool. Scanning all that, huh? Yeah. And then you're gonna switch. Switch it up. Everyone always has one foot that's a little bigger than the other. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. 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 Yeah
trying to figure that out. I don't think they're too tight. I think they're the appropriate tightness for me. So different shoes, different tightness. It's got to feel right. More support. That's what I need. Here are the Hoka's. I think these are the Bondi. I'll figure out the name in a second. The Bondi 7 right here. Regular width. Usually I wear wide. So I've got the wide as well. I'm going to try one wide, one regular and see which one's the better fit. Actually, might be the wide. Here are the two right here. I think it's gonna be the wide. The problem is they only have the gray and I really like the black. But the Hoka's you can see are actually much higher off the ground there than the, uh, than the Brooks. But I really, I really do like it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really thinking about style right now. I'm just thinking about comfort and what feels best. Just imagine, you know, if we're running Disney, wouldn't be on a track like this, but running Disney. In Hoka's, I would imagine that actually be a little bit more difficult to do because they're a little higher off the ground. But I'm not going to, I mean, I like walking a lot. I love park walking. I, got, I can't figure it out. So I spoke to my very friendly associate here and she suggested, she, I told her everything, you know, it's like the, it feels so much better with the Brooks. She just says, let's get the exact same length, but the wide with the Brooks, the 12 and a half wide Brooks uh, Ghost 14 and see if that does it. But the, the heel is still like supporting it. Somehow there's something I've been missing <laughs> with buying shoes and that's, that's heel support. It doesn't hug it quite as tight. It feels like it's not quite as tight. Funny, now I'm like, I want to like certain shoes more than others. <laughs> it's so funny how that works. So I decided just, you know, I'm here and this is again, the same story. You gotta try as many on as you feel comfortable with. Decided to try the Hoka Clifton's on. This is what I'm currently wearing. Now we have a separate issue. I am trying on the Hoka Clifton, which is different from the other Hoka's I tried. And this is, this is the same story, right? You gotta try as many on as you feel comfortable with because it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's extremely impressive how comfortable that is in the heel. So I've been doing a lot of laps with these shoes on and I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go this way. I think I'm gonna go, I can't remember the name of them anymore. It's the, uh, the Hoka's, I'm gonna figure out the name right here. The Hoka Clifton. Again, seems to be the one for me. Again, high arches. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think that might be a good thing. At like, this is park walking speed. This is, this is fast park walking speed. Technically this is three miles an hour. So look at that. That's a pretty good gait, three miles an hour, which is weird, right? I feel, I feel like the incline, is where you'd have pain. 3.5 miles an hour, by the way. So this is quick walking for Run Disney. So after much searching, much exploring, much discovering and fantastic customer service, we've got the uh, uh, Clifton 8 wide 12.5 Hoka shoes. I'm excited. Feel so much better. Huge thank you to Grace and the team here at Fit to Run. Uh, I feel so much better walking around at these shoes right now because it's just, yeah, it's night and day, night and day. Hoka's, Clifton, yeah, it's a good shoe. It's a good shoe, it's one I recommend. Fit to run, they do a great job here. And here we are for lunch, it's deluxe burger time with my fantastic new shoes, love them. Here we are, we're gonna probably try one of the new specialty burgers that they have just for the holidays. I love it, all right, you can see they've got actually got a long line here. The mobile order is not working at the moment. I was, I was mobile ordering, I was like, oh, it's shut down at the moment, that's okay. It's a beautiful day in December, it's about 80, 82 degrees, I think, at the moment. Beautiful, beautiful day here at Disney Spring. For lunch today, we've got some amazing looking burgers here. That's the El Diablo burger, which is a common one known here at Deluxe Burger. A great one next to it. We've got the, uh, I think it's the blue cheese one, very special for this time of year. Actually, it's between two pieces of giant pieces of lettuce there. Isn't that cool? Instead of the bun, you can get it with lettuce. And of course, we got those fries as well. It all looks so good. Really delicious looking options here. Very excited to give them all a try. Of course, we got all those sauces as well. Let's give them a try, let you know what we think. Diablo Burger, absolutely incredible. Love it, the fries, by the way. So good, at Deluxe Burger. In addition, you've also got the, the lettuce wrap uh, blue cheese burger, which I, I think was pretty good. You have to like blue cheese though, and I only like it in small doses. That's a little bit too much blue cheese for me. But overall, Deluxe Burger never disappoints. Don't have a milkshake this time, not this time, but you know it has good milkshakes too. Yum delicious lunch. Okay, now we're on our way to the Magic Kingdom with new shoes. Feels so good. And here we are, another magical day here at the Magic Kingdom. We're back to celebrate some, we're going some rides, have some fun, and just experience it all. Now, I want to show you something as we walk in. The, uh, my, the Apple Watch right here has a different sound associated with it when you tap in with it. 
let's uh, hear it together. You can see it's kind of like a special magic band sound, but you'll hear it. It's it's like the, you don't know, the Apple Watch. Yeah, thank you. Sure enough, it's like a magical sound that you hear as you walk in like pixie dust. It's pretty cool. It's just different, something different. I think all Apple Watches probably do that as you make your way into the park with your Apple Watch, but it might also be a pass holder thing. If you know, let me know. The world's most magical celebration. Catchy, isn't it? It makes us just want to break out into song. Answer the call. Yeah, they've got some great songs. That's new for Dapper Dance. I haven't heard them singing that song. They're always bringing new pieces of merchandise to Magic Kingdom, and especially for the 50th. Check out this pin set right here, this pack of four pins. I hadn't seen this one before. You can see BB-8, Tinkerbell, Simba, Figment. Four pin set here for the 50th anniversary, $29.99 for this set. Very nice. Right by Tomorrowland here, I'm looking at the water and there's a shoe down there. <laughs> My question is, how did the shoe end up in the water? You know what I mean? You can see it, it's like, um, it's either a women's or a kid's, I'm gonna guess size five or seven shoe right there. It's pretty big. Now that we tried shoes on, I'm like observing all the shoes, but I don't know how it got in the water right by Tomorrowland here, but sure enough in there, it'll be gone tomorrow for sure. Now, if you think the Starbucks line is long, check out the line for Joffrey's just as long, if not longer, super long here, right by Space Mountain. It's a delicious one for sure, underneath these fantastic metal palm trees. Now, here we are by Goofy's Barnstormer, and you can see there's been a lot of uh, construction updates here right by Tron. You can see one of the buildings here is just about done, about ready to wrap this one. It really is very interesting to see it coming together. I think it's part of the platform that's gonna be the ramp that takes you up there, because there's actually a walking ramp. Tough to see beyond these trees right there. You can see kind of the rebarb there. It looks like that's part of that ramp that you're gonna be able to walk on to walk all the way up into the Tron Light Cycle attraction. Going to be spectacular, still coming together. One of the lar longest projects that Disney has ever put together. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to be well worth the wait though, because this is an attraction whose anticipation is hard to describe how amazing this one feels to all of us. I can't wait to ride. Now to get another view of Tron, we're gonna check out the People Mover, see uh, another view of it. I'm sure we'll get a better view of that walkway as it's under construction. Here it is, another look at the Tron light cycle construction. They really are making progress super quickly. Every single time I see it, I see something new. See this little uh, bridge up there that's holding the supports are all now kind of a thicker material, very interesting. There's that bridge taking us all the way up. See all this? That is a bridge for us to walk up all the way into the attraction. You can see it's all the way down here. There's that bridge. Now the question is, where does the Walt Disney World steam train come through? And it looks like they're building that right now. See that right there? That looks like the pathway for the steam train. Can't wait to see it when it's done. Ah, Space Mountain. Time to careen through the cosmos on our own personal rocket trip. And just like that, our magical day has come to an end. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you had fun experiencing shoe shopping and the parks with me today. It was a lot of fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a truly magical day. See you real soon.